So I've been working on a workout program that only takes 30 minutes per workout, is done three times per week, and hits the entire body in each workout. So if you miss one, it's not the end of the world. You don't have to figure out where to restart. Now I do have this plan for free over at the GamerBody.com website, so check it out there. But I'm going to actually go over it here and some of the things you should take away when jumping into that program. But let's take a look at some of the ground rules first. So as I mentioned, if you followed this program to an absolute T, it would take you just under 30 minutes to complete each one of the workouts. Now you may need more rest period um, between sets or exercises in this workout program, so it might take you a little longer, but for me, it usually ranges somewhere between 29 minutes to 35 minutes. And this plan does focus on mostly progressive overload to get stronger, mainly looking at the five to 10 rep range. So how I like to look at it, as you usually start around the five rep range, so you're failing or reaching momentary muscular failure at five reps, and then over time, as you do more, you do six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Once you're able to do 10 in the first set, then you're gonna raise up the weight or resistance by five pounds or the next band you have or whatever it might be, the next lightest thing, you're gonna raise it up to that next level and then kind of restart at five and just keep going and making it through that way. So you go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, but once you get to 10 with all the reps on the first set, you add more resistance. Now the goal of each set is to reach what's called momentary muscular failure. And this means that you are actually unable to move the resistance or weight from a certain point in the contraction or shortening phase of the muscle. So for example, when you're doing a bicep curl, when you're raising the weight up towards your head, once you can't raise that weight anymore and you get stuck there and you wait like a second or so, that would technically end your set. However, with bands, there's something a little different I'll get to in a second, but just know the goal of each set you do is to reach that point. Now looking at failure with resistance bands, the one big difference we're gonna have here is when you reach failure with bands, I actually want you to do two reps after that momentary muscular failure. You should not reach the same point. They're basically partial reps to make sure that you're actually reaching failure in that set. So once you do your last rep where you can't raise it anymore, I want you to lower the weight again, and then try and go as far as you can one more time, lower it, and then one last one, again, these should all be less um, than you did before in the range of motion in order to really fatigue the muscle and make sure you use all the muscle fibers and work them as best you can. Now when it comes to total sets, this is where things get a bit more interesting because if you are able to train at a high enough intensity, you could do this in one set. However, if you're like me and training alone, it's very hard to actually reach that point where you're actually contracting all of the muscle fibers and doing it in a way where you're actually reaching real muscular failure. So I do usually recommend two and potentially three sets depending on how you do. So definitely do two if you're by yourself and if you feel like you ever like stopped early for any reason, maybe mentally you gave up or you just felt something weird when doing the exercise in one of your muscles, do a third optional set as listed in the program. But do know, I usually do three myself, but you only really need one if you're able to really, really take that one to failure. Um, but I usually recommend two and potentially three. Now looking at rep speed, I recommend a rep speed of three seconds up and three seconds down, or a three second concentric and three second eccentric. I used to have a little bit more to this, but just to make it easy, three seconds up and three seconds down. It's going to feel a lot slower than what you're probably used to, unless you train kind of slow before. This is usually the middle ground. Um, some people say 10 seconds, some people do like three seconds or four seconds. I like around that six second because it really allows you to have control through the entire range of motion and depending on the equipment you're using, and again, this is more of a resistance bands one that I'm gonna do here, um, you can reduce momentum with some of the movements, like in free weights, you actually can reduce momentum of the movement and have your muscles working harder throughout that range of motion. So when it comes to frequency, I want you to have a minimum of one day between each workout. You can do more, feel free to do more, but I want a minimum of one. The main reason is your body needs to recover from this kind of stimulus, especially if you're actually reaching failure in your workouts, you really need a bit more time to recover from each one. So take that whole day. If you need another day or two, feel free to do that. If you ever feel sick or you don't ever feel fully recovered, take another day before doing the other uh, workout in the routine. However, this is like a weekly plan. So if you do that, you will have to keep track of where you are. But for me, I usually do Monday, Wednesday, Friday as that's my work week and fits best. And I take weekends off. So you can do that or fit it into your schedule as best you can. And do note, you can actually do any two days in the week and then you'll basically hit the entire body. The only thing you might miss are like abs and calves that are in there, but they're smaller muscle that might not matter as much depending on your genetics and your ability to grow them. So just know you can pretty much combine any two of the ex or workouts in the week 
and you'll get a full workout program if you are short on time for the week. So this video will be all about resistance bands and my setup. However, you could modify this to be with any equipment you own, but let's take a look at the equipment you'll need if you're gonna follow along and use resistance bands. So first off, of course, you will need resistance bands and I recommend loop bands. The ones I am demonstrating in the video are the SunPow bands. I also have Undersun bands that I've used a lot in the past, but if you want a cheap, good pair of resistance bands, try out the SunPow or the Undersun if you want one that's a little pricier, but still of really good quality. The second equipment is a resistance bands bar. And my favorite right now is the GEKU or GEKU resistance bands bar. They seem to be newer, so I'm not sure how much they'll be around. But if you need my older version, I do also have the Instar bar. But with that, you will have to buy additional triangle links if you want that one. I will put links in the description to each one. The third item you will need is a step platform. And the one I use is called the step, where you get about four inches of additional room off the ground, which adds some pre-stretch in the band, which is really nice, and is wide enough to stand on and feel comfortable when doing your exercises. I highly recommend this. This can also be used for many other pieces of equipment, but for this one, this is a great piece of equipment for this setup. And as a little note, I do put felt pads on the bottom of the feet of the step because I do put it up against my wall and also helps protect my floors. So if you'd like to do the same, I recommend some felt pads on the bottom. Moving on, we have J-hook handles. And these are simply to avoid grabbing the bands directly as I find it much more comfortable to grab handles instead. So I use these a lot for things like suitcase squats, um, pull downs from my door and things of that nature. So I highly recommend checking them out and using them with your loop bands. So in order to do vertical pulling exercises, I use my door and I use a door anchor for this. Now, if you have like a beam or something in your house you can hook it up to, feel free to use that. But if you're like me, try out a door anchor. And the one I do use is called Boss Fitness. It's a pretty cheap one. You hook it to the top of your door, loop the band through it, and you are good to go. And lastly, to store the bands, the handles, and the door anchor, um, you can't really store the step platform, but if you want the other pieces for storage, try out the Holy Luck drawstring bag that I've been using for a very long time. You could also throw them in a backpack, which I have as well, but the Holy Luck bag has been excellent over the past few years. So that is the list of all the items you will need to do this program with resistance bands. Now that that's out of the way, let's take a look at the actual program itself, a little breakdown before jumping into the exercises you will be doing. So now we're gonna look at the meat of the program and you will see that there are five main exercises you do each day um, and then with that, you're always gonna have some kind of ordering of the first three being compound movements. Then you have a kind of an isolation movement I want you to improve with that I think goes well with that day. And then kind of a finisher exercise that goes along with it as well. So looking at that first exercise, you will notice that it has the five to 10 rep range. I also put in that the rep speed is going to be the three up and three down and you get 90 seconds of rest if needed between each set. Remember, you don't have to do all the sets if you feel you actually reach failure, but again, if you're working out alone, I usually do recommend at least two, um, but you only need the third one if you ever feel like you didn't fully reach failure in the sets before it, or you had to stop early for any reason. The next two exercises in the plan, so exercises two and three, are going to break down in the same rep speed with that three up and three down, but the rest will change to just 60 seconds of rest between each set. I know this is usually a bit longer for most plans, but in order to keep it in that 30 minute limit, I had to put it at 60 and it still works pretty well for me with this setup. The fourth exercise will be that first isolation exercise movement that I'm just trying to improve in as they are probably hit with the compound movements, but not enough as I'd like. So for that one, we are gonna do again that three up and three down the same rep speed um, with also the same uh, rep range to that five to 10, but now you have 30 seconds of rest between each set if you need an additional set. And that finisher exercise, exercise number five in the plan is very similar to the fourth, where you're, again, you're gonna have the uh, rep range of five to 10 with a rep speed of three up, three down, and then a rest of 30 seconds between each set if you need it. So that is it, that is the entire plan broken down pretty quickly. With that, I'm gonna go over each day now and go over the exercises that are in each day. So on day number one is our squat focus day. So we're looking at the lower body. So with resistance bands, we are going to actually warm up with a body weight squat, doing it just for five reps. So without any rest, we're gonna run over and set up our next exercise, which is going to be the front squat with the bands. Again, the main focus on here is hitting the lower body, mainly the quads in this movement, but make sure you're really hitting this one as hard as you can to see the results. 
Exercise number two here, I've labeled as a bench press. It's not really one, because I actually do it standing with the band around my back and pushing with the bar, but because we're using a bar, I just call it a bench press to differentiate from a chest press, which uses the handles. So I'm gonna go with bench press here for exercise number two, focusing on the chest. Now for exercise number three, we're going to be doing a vertical pulling exercise, focusing on the lats. So for this one, it's going to be a pull down. If you're like me, you're gonna set up in your door using the door anchor at the top and looping the band through with the J hook handles. But again, really focus on working the lats. Your biceps will also be involved, but working the lats as best you can. Now, since we haven't really hit shoulders in this exercise, the fourth exercise in the routine is going to be lateral raises. So with the bands, you're going to be setting them up with handles to do those lateral raises. Keep it light as this one can be hard. If you find you can't do it with what you have, feel free to do upright rows instead as an alternative. And then the last exercise in day one is going to be a standing calf raise using the handles. So set that up, hit the calves, just like you said, that's the main exercise. We're gonna finish this uh, workout with calf raises. So that is it for day number one. Remember, add a day in between, so a minimum of one day of rest between that workout before jumping into your second one. If you need an additional day, take it, but let's take a look at day number two. So the warm up for day number two is going to be a body weight push up. Again, the focus here is just getting down the rep tempo mostly and getting your mind right before jumping into the main meat of the program. So our first exercise with this is going to be the standing overhead press with the bands. The focus here is definitely on the shoulders quite a bit. So focus on really taking it slow, using the right rep tempo and getting those shoulders worked and taking the sets you need in order to actually stimulate the muscle. For exercise number two, we're moving to the lower body and focusing on mostly the hamstrings here with doing a Romanian deadlift. Now for this one, you wanna keep your back flat and rigid while doing a hip hinge into the movement and really again, stretching the hamstrings as best you can without bending your knees too much. So this one can be a little hard to learn at first, keep it light, but work at it over time. Now exercise number three with the bands is going to be a close grip press. Now one thing to cue here is you wanna keep your elbows in at the sides of your body and pressing straight out. If you put your hands too far away from on themselves, you're going to be doing more of a chest press. Keep them in, keep your elbows in, in line with your hands, and really press from there to focus on mostly hitting the triceps. Of course, your chest will be involved as well. Now for our isolation movement or exercise number four, we are going to be doing standing bicep curls with the bar. Pretty self-explanatory as you're just gonna be doing bicep curls, holding the bar, and again, focusing on the biceps, doing the contraction through that range of motion. Now the fifth and final exercise of day two is going to be the shrug. Now we're gonna be focusing on hitting the upper back and traps for this one, but again, this will be our finisher for workout number two. So now that workout number two is out of the way, take one day rest minimum or more if you need it, but let's take a look at day number three. So for day number three, the warm up, you have two options. Now, if you're using the bands or you just wanna stick with that, you can just do pull downs by again, hooking the door anchor to the top of your door and focusing on just doing five pull downs while keeping the tempo and getting your mind right. But if you're like me, I like to do body weight stuff to warm up and I like to do pull ups instead. So I do have something called cross grips. I hook up to my door and I do my five pull ups before jumping into the meat of the program. And the first item in the program is going to be seated rows. Now an alternative if you don't wanna do this is bent over rows, but I like seated rows in order to help protect my lower back and really focus on my back doing most of the exercise. So for this one, again, you wanna set up on the floor and make sure you have those felt pieces on the bottom of your step platform in order to protect your walls if you have white walls like I do. Moving on to exercise number two, we are focusing on working the chest directly now with the chest press. The main difference here is we are using the J-hook handles instead of the bar to do this, and we're going to be lying on the step platform. Can feel a little awkward, but you're gonna lie on it to keep it on the ground and really focus on pressing up and bring your hands together to contract the chest as best you can. Of course, your triceps are involved as well, but the meat of this exercise is the chest. Now for exercise number three, we're moving to the lower body and doing a suitcase squat. So for this one, you're actually using the handles and they're down by your sides, kind of more like a deadlift, but here we're gonna get to that squat position. So you actually are still bending your knees in this one and using uh, a knee flexion in order to stand back up. So you will be flexing out with your knees to straighten them out as well as hip hinging um, as you stand up and then going back through that range of motion. But once you are done there, we're gonna focus on the triceps for our isolation exercise number four with the standing overhead press. This one can be a little awkward at first, especially if you were someone bigger and have bigger muscles already. Um, but what you wanna do is try and keep your elbows again right out in front 
um, of your body, not flared out. You want to keep them in as much as you can. And you're pressing straight up overhead to work the triceps as this is the main target of this exercise. And our final exercise of this workout routine is going to be the cable crunch. Now I set this one up on my door. Again, feel free to use a beam or something else in your house if that's sturdy enough for you. Um, but you'll set up above you. And then what you're gonna be doing is kind of sit away from it, but still pulling straight down. You're going to be just flexing your spine in order to contract with your abs and bend at the spine. Um, you don't wanna be like throwing your hands down to the ground. All you wanna be doing is uh, getting that curvature in your spine while contracting your abs and allowing it to go back and forth. So you, again, you don't wanna be using any of the rest of your body. It's just the abs doing a movement. So it might be a little smaller than you think, but that's all you wanna focus on in doing this movement. But that is it for day number three. Now, if you're like me, I would now take the weekends off. So I'd actually take Saturday and Sunday off. I don't know what your work schedule is or how you want to fit this in. But again, I'd take two days off before jumping back into day number one. So you might be asking yourself, where does cardio fit in this program? Now, personally, I don't really do cardio outside of walking my dogs and going on hikes. However, I did run with them the other day, just have a little bit of fun with them. But other than that, I really don't do cardio. If you are someone who wants to fit cardio in, you can, but do know if you're training to momentary muscular failure, you really don't need it as your heart will already be racing. And you'll already improve your cardiovasculature quite a bit with just training in an intense manner. So I do have this entire workout program over on the gamerbody.com website. So you can go there, download it for free and use it with the spreadsheet or put it in your favorite app in order to track it and get better at the movements over time. But if you don't have resistance bands, feel free to also mimic any of these movements to other equipment like free weights such as dumbbells or even other equipment like the Speedians I have. I've mapped it to that as well. So you can use other equipment as well if you don't have resistance bands. I personally built this for the resistance band people on this channel, but take a look from there. Now, I've also taken all the equipment in this video and put it in the description for you as well if you'd like to exactly match what I was using in the video to do the exercises as it's pretty easy to do with the setup I have. But with that, take a look at the program, see if it works for you, change it as you like, and see if you can get results in time.